Do you want to feel happier? Do you want to feel more radiant and more alive? Or to go beyond alive and truly feel like you are thriving? That's what I'm here for. Helping you find that best you that you know is in there. It is. And you can start accessing that you today. It's possible. If you're ready for a shortcut to just that, let's work together. Reach out and let's work one-on-one -on -one to transform you and your life into happy, into thriving. Reach out to me and book a quick call. It's in the show notes and let's get you there. Are you really committed and ready? Then let's do it. Personally, I'm the happiest I've ever been thanks to all the practices that I've made a part of my life. You can be too. It is here for you. I promise. You can also access my course, The Youthfulness Hack, which is all about feeling good and getting radiant and all the things I do concentrated in one spot. Go there today and use code AMY15 for 15% off right now, only for listeners of this show. And if you are truly ready to have accountability and live happy, book a call with me today. The world needs your best. You deserve your best. Hello, and welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, Amy Edwards, and we are here to uplevel our lives, heal, and make our lives the best that they can be at this moment, of which there is no limit. And I'm thrilled that you are here. Thank you for being here. Thank yourself for being here, because every time you step into a space like this, you're saying yes to whatever's to come. You're saying yes to yourself. You're saying yes to loving yourself, all those good things that I'm all about. And so we have an inner child expert today, and I'm so excited about it. Today, we're welcoming Victoria Finch, also known as the heart healer. Welcome, Victoria. I'm so excited to talk about healing our hearts and healing our inner child and I don't know much about this at all so welcome today I'm well, I'm, I'm really thrilled yeah well thank you for having me I you know I I love helping people reach the best they can be you know the higher self because we struggle so much in life and it's my mission to heal the world one heart at a time so I saw it. that. And you also said together we rise. And together I couldn't we rise. I couldn't agree more because I think a lot of times, especially in what you're talking about, people can get a little isolated in their inner work. And if we're willing to open up and be in those vulnerable spaces, there's a lot more healing to be had together. And do you find do you find that to be true? Like yeah. that we can well, like what it comes down to with inner child healing, it's really being vulnerable and being willing to go to the dark spaces in our lives, the dark places that we tend to push down. And when we are well, everything around us is well. We react differently in our relationships. We react differently to our children and to just the world in general. And yes, together we do rise but we've got to be willing to talk and have some of those uncomfortable conversations to get there. Yeah. And um, how did you like step into inner child work yourself? Because I feel like it's a little nebulous. So maybe you can say how it came to you and then what it, you know, means to you a little more specifically than like dark spaces. Yeah. So I did not realize I had a wounded inner child. I will share a story with you of how I came to be the heart healer. When I was about two years old, we lived in a very small home. It was three bedrooms. Uh, my parents had a bedroom. I'm the youngest of six children. My siblings had a bedroom because we had three boys and my sisters were older and two older sisters. So me being the youngest, I didn't have a place. I didn't have a room. I didn't have a crib. I really just had no place. It's whoever would take me, got me basically as a child. Oh. And yeah, and there was an yeah. incident when I was two years old and I, I mainly stayed with my parents. And when I was about two years old, I remember when my dad asked me to leave the room, my parents' room, and I went to my sister's room and they told me to get out. <laughs> We don't want you in here. And then I went to As my they do. room. Right. Went to my brother's room. Same thing. Get out. We don't want you. And then not only do we not want you in here, no girls allowed. So now I'm like a two-year-old. I remember I'm, I'm still in, in diapers 
And all I knew to do was to sit by my parents' door to feel unwanted and unloved. And I sat there with my knees drawn up. And I don't know how long I sat there uh, physically, but I do know that that little girl sat by her parents' door for over 50 years. How did it, I'm in and out of anxiety, in and out of depression, became a high achiever uh, because I kept wanting to be validated even became promiscuous. We don't even talk about that because I wanted to feel wanted. I wanted to feel needed. And in 2017, I find myself on the side of the bed with a bottle of pills in my hand, not caring if I woke up the next morning. I couldn't even find joy and laughter in my children's. And, and they were outside telling jokes. And I, I, it was nothing but darkness for me at that time. And I get ready to take those pills and I hear this voice. I call it the voice of the divine, whom I call God. It said, I made you on purpose for a purpose, and this is not it. This is not who you are. And I knew then I had a heart condition. I knew then I needed to, to seek healing. So I went and I sought healing. Um, I was on the internet, came across a famous hypnotherapist, and she was offering a free session. And I was able to get a little bit of healing, but I knew I needed more. Uh, I started learning, listening to all the greats, the Les Browns, the Dwayne Dyers, all of these greats that you were inspirational. And um, I found another hypnotist to work with me. And she said something that changed my life. And she said, Victoria, you were so busy feeling unloved. You missed all the love that was around you. And I yeah. thought, wow, how many of us are lonely? How many of us put on that fake mask? How many of us don't feel love because we can't see it because of an incident or because of how we were raised? How many of us don't know our worth? And I just knew at that moment, my mission was to heal the world one heart at a time. And that's how I became the heart healer. Wow. Well, how did your own healing progress from there? I mean, did I'm assuming you probably had some ups and downs, you know, like it was a process of you stepping into this new role and healing yourself, right? Like, yes. what did you do specifically for that inner child? I mean, yes. So this is how the inner child came up. Um, when I went into the hypnotherapy, which was my modality of choice for healing, I, I was able to regress back to that child and have a conversation with that child and some memories um, of, that was around that little girl sitting in, in, in the hallway. And I was able to have a conversation with her mm -hmm. and tell her that she was loved and tell her that she mattered. And it was just life changing for me. And I ended up um, still helping others. So I became, I'm a uh, master hypnotherapist, clinical hypnotherapist now, and I'm certified by the International Board of Coaches of Practitioners in Energy Healing. I also do uh, wow. emotional freedom technique, which is tapping. I'm a master practitioner in cognitive behavior therapy, life coaching. So I got educated. You know, because I needed, if I was going to help the world, I needed to be armed <laughs> to do it. Mm -hmm. And as far as my healing goes, um, it was always still something in the back of my mind, you know, because I would, I would learn these things and I would get all these certifications and some of them are just stuck in drawers, right? Because I, it, 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 it was like, I'm doing all of this these things and I'm learning all this and I, I've got this mission now and this newfound purpose in life, but there's still something inside of me that still tells me I'm just not quite good enough. And so that kind of plagued me. Um, so I went back into hypnotherapy I, I, again, because healers need healers. I Absolutely. Back. I mean, yes. often we get into the line of work of exactly what we need. I mean, that's like the, the cliche of therapy, right? You know, exactly. So I went back and when I say in again, when regression, um, I went back again to that little girl and I just, I'm in tears and, and the therapist, she's like, what's going on? What are you seeing? What are you, what are you feeling? Why are you crying? And I said, my dad, my dad had come out of the room and picked me up and he, he didn't know I was sitting by myself. And so he picked me up. He starts walking me up and down the hall feeling, you know, I remember I could tell you what he was wearing and everything, but here's the thing. 
emotions are, are a record of the past, if you will. And the thing is, the impact that has the strongest emotion is the emotion we go and we live by that affects our behaviors and actions and attitudes. The emotion of feeling unwanted was so much stronger than the emotion of dad saying, oh, I didn't know you were there. And so when you're doing this work, that's what I had to realize is that sometimes what we're feeling isn't exactly the truth. How many times do we hear people say, um, oh, I'm, I can't ever get anything right, or I wish I was smarter, and all these this negative self-talk that they give. And the question that we learn to ask ourselves is, <laughs> yeah. is that really yeah. true? Is that, no, is that always true? Yeah. Can you think of incident, can you think of times when that wasn't true? Mm -hmm. Right. And so well, it reminds me it, that reminds me kind of of Byron Katie's work, you know, when you ask like the work, you're like, is it true? How can I know that to be true? And you like you end up investigating, oh, I'm making this blanket statement. Was I truly unloved at that point, you know, or was there something else? Can I know that to be true? And sometimes, you know, sometimes the answer is yes, if you're talking objectively, but often if it's about our emotions, you know, come on. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of us experience trauma that we buried, that we bury. Mm -hmm. And um, whether it's, it's, uh, whether it's sexual abuse or trauma as children, being um, a child or a product of immature parents who don't even know any better, mm -hmm. alcoholics, and you learn to suppress your, your feelings and your emotions, and it just starts to affect you and your life. And I recognize that I may not have been the product of immature parents or alcoholic parents. I still had a child that was wounded, that needed love, that needed help, that needed guidance. And I felt so alone. And here's the thing. We can have so many people around us. We can have the best partner, the best spouse, the best children, everything the best. And we can still feel alone in a crowded room. And why is that? Typically because we don't feel like we're enough. We don't feel seen and we don't feel we can talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, heck, even Jesus had to leave his hometown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you know, I guess I, I feel like, you know, it's like this little part of us just gets stuck there, right? That you just can't break past. And what do you do? What technique? I've heard different stories, like in, in people who've done EMDR or ART, which is accelerated resolution therapy. I've, so I've heard different stories and techniques where you can, you know, go back and your mind doesn't know the difference. You can go back and comfort your own inner child. And so, what did you use for yourself? Yeah. So for me, it was hypnotherapy and emotional. Um, emotional freedom EFT. techniques, which is a tapping and yeah. um, thought field therapy as well. So there's all different modalities out there. And mm -hmm. I always encourage you, the one that works for you is the one, right? Yeah. Some people can get through it with talk therapy. Uh, a lot of people's like, I've been in talk therapy for a hundred, you know, for 10 years and I'm still having triggers and this is still happening to me. And maybe look at a more holistic view. One of the great things I love about my work is that I'm able to work with other therapists that, you know, talk therapists and do other things. And together we can really help clients heal uh, because everything doesn't work for everyone. Sure. I I like that, you know, you stay open to a lot of modalities. So I think that's really important because everybody's different, right? But I guess I'm wondering too, like, how do you even get in touch with that inner child in the first place? Like, how do you even know that's what it is? Because I guess I'm thinking of myself too. I did a little bit of work at one point and a part of me was worried I was just making it up. You know, like, I think some people are very in touch with that. And I don't feel like I am. And so what do you tell people when they feel like, what you know, am I even yeah. in touch with it? Yeah, <laughs> you'd be surprised that you do not make things up. A lot of people feel, and I get that all the time, is like, is this really a memory or am I just making this up? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The yeah. subconscious yeah. is talking to you. 
It's just something that you've hidden, you've pushed down for whatever reason. So how do you know that maybe you should consider help? Maybe there is an inner child that's crying to be set free. Um, triggers. People, places, and things trigger. You You might have a situation where you will react and you and you know that the reaction you're having doesn't fit the situation. Oh, that's a good right? one. Yeah, that's um, a real good one. Mm -hmm. I, another thing is relationships. You don't trust. You have issues with trusting because you were left vulnerable. The people yeah. who should have trusted you, the, the people you should have been able to trust, the people who were supposed to protect you didn't do it. Yeah. And so now you don't trust. You have problems expressing your emotions. Why is it hard for you to express your emotions? Because you were told to be quiet. You were told you didn't matter. Stop crying. You know, I'll give you something to cry about. Uh, if you don't stop, I'm going to do this or that to you. So you learned not to, you, you learned to keep your emotions in. For sure. Um, another sign that you may have been uh, experienced childhood trauma, you're an overachiever. You're an overachiever because you are looking for outside validation. And yeah. It's kind of like Olympians who've been studied. When uh, gold medalists and a lot of Olympians have been studied and high performance athletes, once mm -hmm. they win their, their, their prize or medal, their award, they can't find it, <laughs> right? It's the doing that gets you going. Um, yeah. another, uh, another thing is you may find yourself in situations to where you feel like you're the only one. I'm the only one who thinks this way. I'm the only one who feels this way. And it's it's a really lonely, lonely road. So those are just some of the symptoms. No, those are all really good, like just indicators. And if you can step into that awareness of like, okay, what is this pointing me toward? You know, what needs healing within me? It's, it's so good to just like stay get more aware of all those little things. Cause mm -hmm. I know either I've done those things or I've, I've got a partner who is in recovery from addiction and he's done those things. He's a pro athlete too. So overachiever. And, um, you know, like I've heard all these things at some point or another, and it's like, just to go back to what I was saying too, about myself, am I making it up for me? Self-trust has been a huge issue and it was even when I was a child. And so actually what I'm doubting is actually an indicator of exactly what needs to be healed, which is weird. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think yes. like there's a way to like shift your thinking and reframe it a little bit and go like, okay, well, even, even that is this one issue that I'm having with this is pointing me in the direction, which is totally my thing that I have to work on or one of them anyway. <laughs> yeah. The healing is always in the questions that you ask yourself. I love that. It's yeah. It's always in the questions. It's always in the story. Your healing is, for instance, I work with one client and um, one of her, one of her indicators was feeling unloved and not protected. Mm -hmm. Her mother didn't protect her from an abusive father, alcoholic father. So she felt threatened every day of her life. And there was an wow. incident where this was this really big fight. And she's saying to her mom, why can't we leave? Why can't we leave? And her mother's given her all these excuses, all these excuses. You know, I've been married a few times, all these excuses. So her being a little girl is, well, how about me? Don't I matter too? Don't I matter? And so as she's telling me all these excuses, there's one thing that her mother said was, and we'll be, we'll be poor. And you see, that was her validation that her mother was thinking about her. Just like me being that little girl sitting by the bed. I mean, sitting by the door thinking I wasn't loved, but I was loved. And so she was loved. And when she's telling me this story and we get to the, what her mother has done for her, she's like, I never thought about that. I never and how quickly, that. how quickly can somebody change once they have this realization, once they can shift into a different perspective? Very quickly. I, my clients, I'm usually one, I'm usually three to five sessions uh, very quickly because we That's work awesome. from the subconscious mind. 
because mm-hmm. we 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 cut through through the prefrontal cortex, which is our logic, reasonable mind. You know what I mean? We cut yeah. through all of that. We go straight to the subconscious mind, and it's the subconscious is where that inner child is. And when you can have that alignment and coherence with your mind and your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a part of you that knows that you were created. So you've got to be worth something. But your mind is telling you, no, you're not because your mind will lie to you, but your heart's not going to lie to you. And when you can get those two in coherence, it's very, very fast. Oh, our minds are just one of my friends the other day was like, our mind is a torture chamber. And I was like, yeah, it is. It can really uh, do a number on us and convince us of things that are not the truth, like you were saying. Uh, So, okay. So what are some pathways to this that you've taught? Do you do like self hypnotherapy or like, what are some of the techniques? All hypnotherapy is self hypnosis. Oh, okay. No one can, no one can put you in trance without your permission. If I say, close your eyes and put your hand on your heart, I can't make it close your eyes and put your hand on your heart. Right. (laughs) Right. right. (laughs) You're doing it. So all hypnosis is self hypnosis. Are you ready to up-level your pleasure practice? I have in mind, and the main things that have helped me are the tools that I've found from wands. Wands creates luxurious products that encourage us all to honor our body, celebrate our sexuality, and live in pleasure with more pleasure all the time. One of my favorites, if you listen to this show, then you probably already know, is the cervix wand. Wands has trademarked their number one best-selling glass pleasure wand. It's for vaginal and anal de-armoring, and it's designed for cervical and G-spot stimulation. And let me tell you, it's incredible. It's helped thousands of women become more connected to their bodies and their pleasure, and supports them to heal pelvic pain through self-yoni massage, and helps awaken more pleasure. Just recently, I've ordered the Venus wand, another trademarked wand from Wands, and it's designed to activate and awaken the G-spot and more. Also, don't miss one of their new offerings, which are free bleed blankets that can be used as waterproof intimacy blankets. They have a beautiful selection now available. But take a look around at wands.com, that's W-A-A-N-D-S, because they have a huge selection of incredible items like yoni eggs, crystal pleasure wands in amethyst, black obsidian, anything that your heart desires, and so much more. Check them out at wands.com. That's W-A-A-N-D-S dot com. And use my link in the show notes to get 10% off or simply enter my code Amy Edwards at checkout. Again, that's W-A-A-N-D-S wands.com. Y'all, I have started using higher dose products and I am such a fan. You know, I don't put anything on this podcast that I am not 100% completely behind. And I have a special discount code for you for all higher dose products. I'm so excited. If you don't know, Higher Dose is a wellness company. They have wellness tech products, they have tools, they have supplements, and they have body care. They have so many things that are hot right now too that are really biohacking and up-leveling our lives at home, which is really cool. They have an infrared sauna blanket. They have an infrared PEMF mat that I'm so excited to be sharing about soon. One of my favorites though is the red light face mask. It stimulates collagen, it activates glowing skin, reduces fine lines, regenerates cells and it's soft. It's not like one of the hard plastic ones, so you can kind of move it around on your body, which I've been doing, and I am seeing amazing results. I am absolutely addicted to it. I use it every single night, and I'm using it in conjunction with one of their other products, the Glow Serum, and I'm very picky about what I put on my skin, and I am loving the Glow Serum. It's specially formulated to plump and hydrate and stimulate radiant skin, which that's the goal. They have a ton of other products too, magnesium ingestibles, magnesium body care, which has a healing oil and a serotonin soap that you can use in your bath, which I've been using too. It boosts your mood, enhances your skin, and deepens your detox, gets you calmed down. Anyway, I'm a fan. So I'm so excited to offer you 15% off using my code MAGIC15. Go to the show notes. You can click through on the link right there. Or if you go to Higher Dose, just enter the code MAGIC15 and you'll get 15% off. Higher Dose has been featured in Goop, Glamour, Elle, Vogue, Bizarre, Allure, basically you name it. And there's a reason why. So go check it out. It's at HigherDose.com and enter my code MAGIC15 for 15% off. 
experiences. And I really don't use hypnotherapy as much as I use emotional freedom. It just depends on what is called for. And I'm an intuitive. Ever since I was a little girl, I, really young, I just remember when people uh, would have something wrong with them and I didn't know, but I would touch them and like on the shoulder or on the arm. And I'd say, it's going to be okay. I had no idea that I had this gift to know where and when people are hurting. And it's only been in the last, since I started this work that has gotten stronger. And, and so using the intuitiveness along with the modalities, that's how I'm a little bit different than the average Joe <laughs> that's doing this because I see what you don't see. I hear what you don't say. Wow. What did you do before this? Like, what was your life like? Oh, um, so I'm an entrepreneur. I own several businesses. Um, one of mm -hmm. those is Avalon Executive Assistance. We provide oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to CEOs. So I do that. Mm -hmm. So I've just, I've owned businesses. I'm not an entrepreneur at heart. And, and you know, I honestly, I believe I've always done this work. I just didn't know it. I've always been the person that people would call if they had an issue or a problem. I'm the youngest of six children, but I'm the one who gets the calls when something's happening and gets asked for the advice. It's something that I, I feel I've always done. I just didn't know that it was, I can make a living at it. <laughs> I think that's kind of why I asked, because I think that so often people can find these threads running through their lives and not realize it. And so I think that was kind of why I asked, like, I was curious what you saw, you know, in your own purpose that perhaps was presenting in just a different way. Right. Yeah. It's yes. so interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what's interesting, too, is um, something, too, that I never really realized is that for some reason, when someone is about to pass over in the family, I get called to the hospital. Wow. I'm, I'm always the one that gets called to the hospital. And I found that interesting because I, I didn't realize, someone says, I see life energies. And I, I'm like, what? What is that? <laughs> and <laughs> apparently, <clears throat> I have the ability to know when someone is getting close to, to passing over. So I always wow. get these calls, right? And even the, the doctors and, and what's happening. And, and I will say, um, they're ready to say goodbye. I just, I, this, this is the weirdest thing. I just know that before my, my brother passed over, um, I called everyone in my family. I said, you have to call, his name is Mark. You have to call Mark. You have to talk to Mark, see how he's doing, see what's happening. And a week later, we lost him. Wow. I just knew. So I think these are gifts that I've always had. And I didn't realize, one, how to use them what that purpose was. And, and we have to go to dark, we have to go to those dark places. I, that little girl, I had to go back to that little girl. And I mm. had to, when I was sitting on the side of the bed with those pills, I, I knew, I knew when I heard that voice, that that was like my, my come to Jesus moment. That was a time that I had a pivotal decision to make in my life. Am I going to listen to the voice or am I not going to listen? Everybody has that moment. Are you going to mm -hmm. get up and move forward? Are you going to not do that? Yeah. And you have to answer the call. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder too, you know, talk just real quick about your gifts. Um, sometimes I wonder too, if I'm, uh, did, were there any more siblings after you or were you the youngest? I'm the youngest of six. Okay. I'm the youngest, but only of two, but sometimes I wonder as the youngest and, you know, you are struggling to feel heard if, cause I'm, I'm quite intuitive as well. And you remarked on my energy, even just, you know, looking at my social media or something, I feel mm -hmm. like I can tap into that too. Sometimes I wonder if when you're in that situation as a child, you don't attune to that even more because you're searching for an unspoken way of connection. You know, you're searching, you're just looking for that more 
than perhaps somebody else. Like, what do you think of that? Is that? I think as a child, I think, unfortunately, especially um, children of parents or abuse or um, who have who have been wounded, I think it gets ripped out of them. No, it, mm-hmm. no, not ripped out of them because your gift is your gift. They can't take it away, but it gets pushed. It gets squashed. It's kind of like when kids are young, oh, I can't wait for you to walk and talk. And then the next thing you know, shut up and sit down. It's that kind yeah, of like, like it's muffled right? or so, something. Yeah, like you put, yeah. like you put fabric on top of it yeah. or something. And so like as you, so as you grow up, these things come and we all have gifts. They're different gifts. Mm-hmm. We all have them. But as we grow up, we start to not trust ourselves because it was not, um, as, as children, no one said, Hey, I recognize this in her or him and nobody Mm -hmm. helped to to, uh, promote it. Nobody helped to uplift it. And we just pushed it down thinking, ah, it's just in my mind. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. How much of the inner child work once you're in tune with that is healing versus a practice, you know, like how much of it is like, oh, I can say that feels like there's some resolution versus, you know, I, I'm, I'm still in a practice of healing it. Um, that's a very good question. I would say, first of all, even though I'm the heart healer, I've never healed a heart. Everyone does it on their own. I, I'm just a facilitator. Mm-hmm. You're a guide, responsible. Like a guide. Yeah. Yeah. You're responsible for your own healing. For instance, another client I'm working with, she hasn't driven in a year, afraid to death, wow. afraid she's going to have a, a panic attack, wouldn't drive. Uh, we got to working with her. She sends me a text message. Look what I'm doing. And she's driving because that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to drive. She wanted that independence. I did not do that for her. She did that. She did that. And wow. as far as the practice, yes, meditation, vis- uh, you know, visualization, all of that is really good to do to keep yourself up. Always speaking affirmations and being positive, what you're saying to yourself, self-awareness, celebrating you. These are things that you should be doing on an ongoing basis. Agreed. Agreed. (laughs) And I do. And I have to. I think that, you know, um, sometimes these bigger things that like when we say inner child healing feels like a project that you're going to complete at some point. Mm. And I think that's like where that question came from. Like, it sure would be nice to be like, okay, I did that, you know? (laughs) Like, Yeah. Look at it as self-development and self-improvement. It's always an ongoing process. We can always get better. We can always improve upon whatever it is that we want in life. And it's just development, right? We don't want to be the same person five years from now that we are today. Mm -mm. It's not like, it's not where you have to sit and meditate for 10 minutes or 20 minutes a day or where you have to do these things or you have to do those things. What tends to happen is once we get to the subconscious mind, it becomes natural. Mm -hmm. You start to look in your mirror when a client says, when she couldn't even say she loved herself and, and she looks in the mirror, she said, I said, I loved myself in the mirror today. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. You know, when you, and when I get, and and I have so many stories like that, she doesn't have to say, I love myself every day in the mirror. Right. I do. I do. I do. Victoria. You just, (laughs) you just, I can tell you when you become those things, it just is natural. It's Mm -hmm. natural. The reason why affirmations tend not to work is because they stop at the brainstem. A lot of Mm. times people will stand in the mirror and they'll say, I am great. I'm not saying don't do it, but they'll say, I am fabulous. I am smart. I am all these wonderful things. And they walk away from the mirror and still don't feel it because they haven't really felt it at the heart level. So it stops at the brainstem. What can you do? There's a book by Noah St. John called Affirmations. And what I've heard he, of that. He does, he asks questions. How am I so lovable? Now your brain mm-hmm. is designed 
to answer whatever question you give it. It is designed to do that. So when you say things, why am I so lovable? You will look in the mirror and say, wow, my, I'm having a good hair day, right? And when you mm-hmm. say things like, how is it? I'm so smart and figure that out. Now your brain has, and you will start finding things in your life to make those statements true, to answer those questions. I always encourage people to do affirmations instead of affirmations, because if you don't believe it, it's gonna get stuck. And if you do it, if that's your everyday practice, beautiful. One of the things that I do suggest we do every single day, and that is find a space of gratitude every day. Every morning, every night, find things to be grateful for. Rather, it, it doesn't have to be big. It could be a light switch. You know, it could be feeling the fact that you can feel the ground on your feet. It doesn't have to be, did you have feet? It could be anything, yeah. right? Because yeah. if you can put yourself in a state of love and gratitude, they are the highest states of being. And when you can get there, science like, machines will see your electromagnetic field up to three meters. That's about nine feet. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I say every day, every day, find something to be grateful for. Yeah. I mean, and I think that could extend to your inner child too. Like if you just said, I'm, I'm grateful for that little me that, Mm -hmm. you know, was so sweet and just wanted to be loved, right? I mean, is that, mm, is that spending time in the wrong space or? It's not. So one of the exercises that I do is um, I will have a client, um, we'll do some breathing exercises and I will have a client sit and, and there's three chairs. Imagine three chairs. It's a seven-year-old you what would you say to her? And then you say to the seven-year-old, and then you go to the 15-year-old, you go to the 20-year-old, and you're going to see how each one changes. You'll see how the seven-year-old becomes the 15-year-old and how she changes into the 20-year-old. And you have these conversations. And what would you say to her? I'm so glad you survived. I'm so glad you're so beautiful. I'm so glad you got me through the hard times. <laughs> I'm, I'm, thank you. Thank you so much. And you free them. And see, that's the that's a true work of inner child healing is you free them. You think, and I, Don, um, Donna Pell, she's called a spiritual waitress. Love her. She gave me a concept that was simply beautiful. And that is, we think we need freeing. No, no, no. It's the child that needs to free. And so when you do this exercise, it's amazing how your inner child is now set free. See, the the wounds, the wounds are now the scars that make you whole. That's, I like that so much. Even just sitting here, I imagined myself like... And it took me some work. Like I had to force myself to really picture what I was like and picture me at seven and picture me at 15 and picture me at 20, just when you were saying that. And I was like, wow, you know, so many times I don't think we even take the time to just do that for a minute. I mean, like it doesn't even have to be long, but, um, felt good. That was, that was interesting to me. And that was kind of my next question. Like, what are things that we can do on our own? Like if somebody's like, I don't know how to hypnotize myself and I, I don't maybe have the money to go to you or, um, you know, what can I do right now in this moment to, to do it? Like, that's a really interesting technique. I was wondering about like, you know, if you can tap into that specific event, let's say like yeah. you had at two, like for me, I can think of one in particular, um, when I was in second grade, I, I had a friend that I always felt like left out from, and she would kind of treat me poorly. And, you know, it, it, as a result, I believe I've always kind of been insecure in relationships. Mm-hmm. And so that's been some of my work. And so if I'm looking back on that specific day, I, 
can't remember why, but she slapped me across the face in the playground at school. So mm. when I think about that event, you know, like I cringe a little and it hurts my yeah. feelings a little. Um, my grandmother called her out on it like years later, said, mentioned it in front of everyone. And I was like mortified, mm. right? <laughs> but I think my grandmother was hurt for me, you know? Yeah. Um, and so what, what, like, I guess I could sit beside that little girl and, you know, well, what we do is, oh, what we do actually is it's typically between birth or womb and age seven. That okay. This would have been seven. Close. seven. That tends to be, that tends to be our first moment of unloved, what we call unloved. There's a scientific name, but I won't bore you with that. What's but the that's scientific name? It's usually what's, sometime in the. What, what's the scientific name? Uh, desensitization. And so um, it's usually from the womb to age seven. That's when that first moment of unloved comes. Going back to that time in your mind, just close your eyes, get really quiet and just go back to her and, and let her know that it wasn't her fault. And whatever was going on with the other little girl was really her issue and not your issue. Maybe she had a bad day. Um, the question would be what deeper work would be um, why as a child you felt you needed to hold on to that relationship that wasn't serving you, right? Yeah. That's where kind of the deeper work comes in is why do you feel that you had to hold on to her and she wasn't treating you well? Um, but yeah, you just, you can literally just close your eyes and go back to that moment. And what would you as an adult say to that little girl that got slapped? Mm -hmm. And you do that in your own mind and you can do that in your own mind. Yeah. You know, but what you brought up is very interesting. And I don't think I've thought about like, why was I holding on to that relationship in particular when the year before that, I had become best friends with someone else because she and I weren't in the same classroom. So in first grade, I, you know, was friends with someone else who also didn't treat me well. She's a wonderful person, but she didn't speak any English at the time, but I didn't care. And she would say, I don't like you. And, um, and I didn't care. Right. She ended up, she's a wonderful person. She was like valedictorian mm -hmm. of our high school, but, um, but th that's, that's interesting, right? Like to, to even take that back. So like, maybe I'm allowing a relationship that didn't serve me. Why? And again, it's like you said, it's asking those questions. So, yes. you know, we're, and we're, I having would little, imagine, we're having a little Amy therapy, but yeah. <laughs> I would imagine that even as an adult, you found yourself in relationships that did not serve you. So the question, oh, totally. Is, yeah, yeah. So the question becomes why, what was it yeah, about why? that? And that yeah. And that's, and that's the work that I do. We find out the why and we deal with the why and we go to those mm -hmm. places. Um, why we go to those places so that we can resolve the issues as to the whys. Can you always get to that place? Like, what if it's like, I actually, I think I know why it is, but for me, but um, like, can you always get there? Like for me, I think that, when I was an infant, I had spinal meningitis and I, right after I was born, I was in the hospital and my dad told me that they couldn't pick me up. Like I was just, I was in this like plastic thing and I would cry and no one could pick me up because they, because I had to stay in there because they were trying to get me well from spinal meningitis and like not have my brain swell. Right. And so I, through therapy and stuff have kind of been like, oh, maybe I've felt abandoned, you know, from this early age. And so I've tried to heal that and pick up that baby and, and care I would say that's her. not it. You would say that's not it because it's that doesn't necessarily related to that's holding on to so, a friendship, so right? I'll, I'll give you an example. I had, okay. a, I had a client who was claustrophobic. I mean, like okay. really bad. Like she's telling me that she and her husband went on vacation and and they met these friends in a penthouse, 19 floors up. She would not get in the elevator. She walked 19 wow. <laughs> floors. That's how bad. And she's like, I don't know where this is coming from. I have no idea. And she's telling me that the story that she gave me, maybe from her dad, 
was that when she was a baby and they were at church, mom would take her when she would cry and like snuggle her snuggle her child when she was a baby on her, her breast and she couldn't breathe. Or she thought maybe she couldn't breathe and she thought that that was it. And I said, that's mm-hmm. not it. And I asked her, I said, tell me a time that you can remember when you felt trapped and could not escape. She went right to, she says, when I was a child, we went on vacation to Disneyland. And for whatever reason, there was an issue with the plane and I couldn't sit by my parents. And I had to sit beside these two men that I didn't know. One of them smelled horribly and I was petrified. Because I didn't know what these men, I didn't know them. My parents, I couldn't see them because they were, you know, further up on, she says that, that I was horrified the whole time, the whole flight. We worked on that. She's in elevators now. Wow. No, so specific too. Like she remembered it so vividly, which is interesting, right? Yeah. But the whole time she thought it was because her mother had, I'm like, that's not it. So this is where my intuition comes in at. Yeah. And I usually will ask one question. If you, I will usually ask one question and whatever that question that comes up, that's usually when you can go and pinpoint the spot. So if and somebody's holding, on that. if somebody's holding onto relationships that don't serve them, what would that question even be? Well, it's going to be different from, for everyone. Well, what would it be in my so, case? So, so a question might be, um, if someone's holding on to relationships that doesn't serve them, a question might be, um, I have to tap in. I'm trying not to tap okay. in, but I will. <laughs> this is you open. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing it. I'm going for it. Yeah, it's just, like, it, just uh, go for it. <laughs> I'm just curious. So, like so if you go into relationships that doesn't serve you, a question might be when was there a time that you can remember that you want you're a giving person? And you wanted to give something to someone and they rejected you. And you've been trying to give ever since. Hmm. And it could have been like you wanted to share a toy and somebody knocked it out of your hand. I don't know why that came up, but it could be you wanted to like you were two or three years old. I'm going back to two or three years old where you wanted Mm -hmm. to share something and you were rejected. My sister rejected me all the time. I mean, like all the time. So there, uh, uh, I, if I, if I sit with it, how, I mean, many, could how long is, how many years between you and your sister? Four, four years apart. Ah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you came and took the attention. Oh yeah. And I was cute. Like everyone always yeah. talked about, I had curly hair and, you know, big eyes and eyebrows and like, so, and I was sick right when I was born, right? So I'm sure that was jarring in itself, you know? Like, then you're just like, well, what what am I, you know? Right? So I can imagine that that would be something. (laughs) Can I speak freely? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You have been seeking your sister's approval all this time. Yeah. Yeah. We're friends now, now, and she, we're, we're, in, we're in a good space now, but I, that sounds legit, you know, and yeah. it took a long, long time, but maybe there's still so are you, that so, part of so, me that so you're in it. a good, you're, you're in a good space. So here's my question. You're in a good space, but do you feel fully accepted? No. And that's so interesting. No, I don't. So, like if we're so speaking this is freely, the work that I do. This is yeah. the work that I do. Oh, uh, like she's like the one relationship that I still want to um present in a certain way to her. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, you know, when you feel like, like I'm so like open on this show, like with people I know, but like that relationship, I still can tell that I'm not always completely forthcoming because I want her to think good of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Woo! We got something. That's that's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so. Um, so now the question becomes, what do I do about it? So yeah, okay. that's what where the do? work comes in, right? That's where mm-hmm. we go and through a series of exercises, we go and basically help you make peace with it. 
That's so, yeah, yeah. I mean, identifying it and then figuring out how to make peace with it. And when you say make peace with it, does that mean, I guess that means a lot too, that well, you find the healing yourself rather than, you know. Sometimes sorry never comes. Oh, sure. Yeah, right. But what do you do uh, for when For a lot of people, never, I'm sure. So that's what it means, makes peace with it. Sometimes sorry never comes. So how do you handle yeah. when sorry never comes? Right. How do you handle what if someone's when the relationship you know? that you want so badly never happens? That's what it means to make peace with that. And then there's a series yeah. of exercises that we would go through to help you with that or that I help my clients with. Yeah. And there's also probably a series of affirmations in there where you can ease into saying to yourself, like, in a compassionate way, you know what, you were doing the best you can. And like, like, rather than beating yourself up for like, oh, why didn't I think of this or something like that. So with emotional with emotional freedom techniques, we use exposure therapy with yeah. cognitive behavior therapy. So okay. we expose you to the pain, basically, like, mm -hmm. um, let's say, uh, <laughs> I had this client and she just freaked out. She couldn't believe I did this to her. She says, well, maybe there's no hope for me. Maybe I'm never going to get any better. I said, you may not. You may not ever get better. So I made her problem so much worse. And so now her brain says, she says, well, but I think if I worked at it, I can. They call that. So now all of a sudden we've got something to work with. Oh, we've got a starting point. So you mm -hmm. don't think you're really hopeless. Right. Right. So that I had to expose her to that truth that she was saying to herself so that we can get past it. So we absolutely so if someone has had trauma, which is why I take people to the dark places, we go to that big fight, we go to that abuse, we go to that time that your you know mother pushed you down the stairs or she said things that were mean. We go there and we bring up all those emotions. <laughs> And this is why you really should do stuff like this with someone who's trained, whether it's a therapist, doesn't have to be me, um, because someone has to help you through that emotional yeah. journey. Um, so that's exposure therapy. We expose you, we bring it back up, and then we come back with, but I love myself. I accept myself. This happened to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I'm kind of curious, like what you mentioned, there are things that you do every day, like gratitude, uh, curious, what, what else, what other practices you do every day mm -hmm. to, you know, stay in your now, best self? I have reached such a point to where I understand that if I want love and joy and peace and all these wonderful things, I have to become it. I have to become the love that I seek. I have to become the joy that I want to live. For me, it's really natural, but I've been working at this for a very long time. I'm 61 years old, right? I've been working at this. I, for me, it really comes down to that gratitude. It comes down to if I'm walking down, if I'm walking outside, I'm like, thank you for that beautiful bird song. Mm -hmm. If I'm in, if I'm, at washing my hands, I'm like, thank you for this water coming out of the faucet. So I live in such a space each and every day. Now, if it's something that's big coming up and I'm nervous about it, I've learned to turn my fear into excitement. I learn if, if I have a big speech coming up because I'm a public speaker or an interview and maybe mm -hmm. I'm nervous about it because I'm a human at the end of the day, I will just, I am so excited that I get the opportunity to do this. I am so happy. Those are, that's my daily practice. And then I, I, I meditate. So I do go mm -hmm. into uh, a meditation. I spend time with, I, I'm a, I'm Christian. I'll spend time in my Bible and just, you know, that quiet time to listen. Um, I will ask the question, what is, what do I need to make sure my intention is today to make myself better today than I was yesterday? And I write. Journaling is so important. Journal, journaling, um, having uh, gratitude each and every day, getting outside with some fresh air, being around quality people, be around people who lift you up and not pull you down. 
we have to uh, get rid of the shit of what is if only I had of <laughs> in life. Yeah. So, so yeah. Anytime I catch myself is like, oh, I should have, I stop myself instantly when it comes mm-hmm. up and it's like, I did what I did with the information that I had. And then I talk to myself all day. I talk to myself all day. It's like, I'm like a seed. I am planted in, 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 <laughs> fru- in fruitile soil. And I'm always talking to myself. People are always think crazy. So those are the things that I do daily. Not me. I don't think that's crazy at all. That's what you do. That's what <laughs> that, I do it. I do it all the time. I use my voice as my tool. Like that yes. is, yeah, yes. that is crucial crucial to my well-being and to be all the things that I seek. Like that's where it's at. It's important to speak it. It's important to write it. Yeah. And writing it, it gets it out of here and it makes it more uh, real. It's more real. So true. Do you encourage your clients to write a lot of their inner child work or, you know, where their trauma lies? Do they do that too? Is that a practice that you recommend? A lot of people don't, you should journal. That's what the journaling comes in at. Yeah. All right. So you should journal your thoughts as they come up. And the thing about thoughts is not to judge them. Yeah. Don't judge your thoughts. Just let them come and let them go. There are no bad thoughts. It's how you react to those thoughts. You just let your thoughts come. And then if you put them on paper, that's fine. Now you can see what you're thinking. In fact, um, science has said that 95% of our thoughts are from the thoughts from the day before or repetitive thoughts. And 85% <laughs> of those are negative. Wow. And Studies have shown that we have somewhere between 50 and 70,000 thoughts each day. And think about that, 85% of those being negative. So it takes training and it starts for every disempowering thought, I have to reframe it with an empowering thought. And it Mm -hmm. can be exhausting. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't that that the truth? (laughs) Yes, it is. But it's also a habit that you can continue to hone over time for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are coming close on time and I want to say, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I had a breakthrough Victoria. So, (laughs) I mean, like, that's so awesome. I mean, like, hopefully that's like triggering some other people to ask these questions, like to go back a little further and like, you know, just wonder about those things. So that, that is so helpful. So thank you. And I want to just turn it over to you too, and see if there's anything that we didn't get to that you really wanted to talk about today, or if there's anything just on your heart or anything you want to reiterate and emphasize. Yeah. The main thing that I want everybody to know is that you matter, that you are enough and that you are seen. I think that is so important that people understand that they matter and that they are enough and they are seen because we spend so much of our lives feeling invisible. We spend Mm -hmm. so much of our time not caring for ourselves. Self-care is not selfish. In fact, self-care is the best thing you can do for anyone that's around you. Taking care of you first. It's so important. There's a reason why they tell us to put on our oxygen mask first. Don't be afraid to go to the dark spaces. Don't be afraid. You have to take personal accountability for your healing. There's not a therapist, a doctor, a personal development guru that's going to do this for you. I've had so many clients that spend thousands and thousands of dollars on self-development not to do the work. You have to do the work. You have to do the work yourself. And for those that are interested, I do have um, a small guide, an ebook, and it's called Healing Your Inner Child, A Guide to Overcoming Childhood Trauma and Cultivating Self-Love. If you would awesome. like, if you would like that, I met just ask Victoria everywhere. It's like on Instagram, just ask Victoria underscore. I'm just ask Victoria International on my website. So if you'd like to have a copy of that, you're more than welcome to. Email me at info at justasvictoria.com and we'll make sure you get a copy of that book if you're interested in. I just want people to know that they matter and you are and you are so beautiful. If people could see themselves the way I see them, 
I think the world would be such a better place. <laughs> yeah, I have no doubt. I agree with you. And thank you for that offer. I will be sure to put it in the show notes or how people can email you and reach out to get that. So thank you so much for that offer. And you kind of beat me to the next question, which was how can everyone find you? So it's just <laughs> at, ask Victoria underscore on Instagram or just ask Victoria International dot com. Correct? Yes. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so grateful. Thank you for opening your heart and, and, and sharing all your practices here or so much, because as we talked about at the very beginning, we talked about yeah. keeping it simple and, you know, it, things don't always have to be super complicated. And so they thank you so much. They don't. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad you were here. Victoria Finch, the heart healer. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone that showed up today. I got a lot out of this. And I hope that you know, maybe you're stepping into more questions to ask. And as always, I always encourage you to share this episode with a friend, because then conversations start. And we talked at the beginning about together we rise. And you know what, it's true. When we have these conversations, we open things up, we're using our voice, we're calling things in, magic starts to happen. Things get put in motion. So have the conversations, share this with a friend, open up, and you never know what's gonna happen. So thank you to our guest today, Victoria Finch. Thank you to you for being here today. And please rate, review, subscribe. Remember that my courses are out, the Ageless Mindset and the Youthfulness Hack. And Ageless Mindset is free for you too. And it is all about these reframes and how we can get our mind into the best possible space and building those habits. So thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Keep that healing going and thank you. do the work, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, Till next time. This has been the Amy Edwards Show from Overcome Studios. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And thank you so much for being here. Sign up for our newsletter at amyedwards.com.